How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys are having a great day so far. My name is Gianluca and I'm now a second year Canadian medical school student. I mean, at least I think I am. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually at a three-year Canadian medical school program. And normally right now for the summertime, we'd actually be done classes and everyone would be off and away at their clinical electives for the summer. But because of the whole pandemic situation right now, us students still aren't allowed in the hospitals yet, um, or my year of students anyways. And as a result, all of the classes that we would have been doing starting in September have now been moved to right now. So I thought now would be a great time to talk about my entire first year and the things that I wish I knew before I started in medical school last year. I think the concept that I want to start with is actually a question that I used to ask myself all the time back towards the end of high school, then even in undergrad, and I would even ask as many people as I could. But the question is, just how hard is medical school actually, and then more specifically in my case, how hard is the very first year of medical school? And I think an analogy that most people will say when describing medical school is that trying to learn things in medical school is like trying to drink out of a fire hose. Now I remember that when I used to hear people say that, I'd actually get a little bit nervous, and that's because this whole concept of drinking water from a fire fire hose is an impossible task. It's not something that anyone could actually do. And thankfully, that's not what medical school is all about. Now, after having been in medical school for an entire year now, I could say that a much more accurate representation of what it's like to actually be a medical school student is basically like you're just walking around with a knapsack all the time. Picture yourself as a student just walking around with a knapsack and every single thing that you do in medical school is going to be like carrying a book, a standard sized book. So if you had any book in particular, this single book could represent your coursework. And holding it like this, the book isn't actually very heavy, but every time you take on a new task in medical school, all you have to do is take your book and put it inside your knapsack. So if that's gonna represent coursework, right now my knapsack is very easy for me to manage and hold. But as time goes on, you start taking on additional responsibilities. Things like extracurriculars, things like research, things like side projects, things like YouTube in some cases. And these are all gonna be additional books that you're gonna have to be placing inside your knapsack and carrying around with you basically every single day. And alone, each of these books is very, very light and manageable, but when you start grouping a whole bunch of them together, the bag can get very, very heavy very quickly. Now, the good news is that for anyone who's actually trained with weights before, you know that the longer that you carry something heavy and the more that you get used to actually performing that task, the better that you get at it. So over time, you're actually able to carry a heavier and heavier bag. But the challenge for me so far in medical school in my first year has been learning exactly how much I could actually fit into my bag without being crushed under it, but at the same time, providing just that right amount of resistance so that I'm getting better and progressing and eventually being able to do more things. Okay, so now that I talked about medical school difficulty as an overview and I've also explained my knapsack theory I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the five tips things that I wish I knew before I started medical school because they'd make it a lot easier. Now, my first tip that I have to everyone is to be aware of a little something called imposter syndrome. And this is something that I had actually never heard about until I got to medical school. But basically what happens is that when you first start off as a brand new first year medical student, you get there on campus and everything is awesome. You're walking around with a little bit of that spring in your step because you're a brand new medical student. And that fades a little bit later once you start talking to the upper years and the residents. But in the beginning, it's super awesome. Then you make an observation once you actually get into class and you've been working for a little while, once you look around the room and realize that every single person here is amazing and super smart. And that's exactly where imposter syndrome could really start to set in, especially once you start talking to other people in your class and seeing what they know or what they think they know. Uh, and then you start comparing it to yourself as to what maybe you didn't study for this particular test or what you missed from this reading. It's really easy in a lot of cases for people to think that they made it into medical school by mistake and that they really shouldn't be there at all. And that's kind of where the name imposter syndrome comes from. Now, personally, I think that all of us medical students, pre-meds, and then even university students in general will go through something very similar to this. And just on a personal level, I thought that this was going to be something that I had no problem with. But I remember in the very beginning when I was starting up in medical school and I was just starting this YouTube channel, I think I had like 12 subscribers at the time or something similar. I put up a video about my journey to medical school where I was very transparent about my grades in undergrad and the struggles that I had and how I was able to rebound from them. And I remember I got a message 
message right in the very beginning. Someone jumped into my DMs on Instagram to very politely tell me that uh, I should have never been accepted into medical school with my GPA and that I didn't have what it takes, um, that my spot should have went to someone else. And I remember on the one hand, I thought to myself that this person really didn't know what they were talking about. They didn't actually know who I was. But then in the back of my mind, you always then start to double guess yourself. Are you right for this spot? Do you have what it takes to do the things that you want to do? My advice to everyone is just don't make the same mistakes that I did and I know it's easier said than done. But everything that you've accomplished in getting into medical school was done for a reason. You deserve to be there so don't put yourself down and definitely don't let other people put you down. Just keep working hard and you're going to accomplish whatever you want to. Okay now I know that was a super long tip but it was very important. I want to make sure that I was talking about it. The second tip that I have for everyone though is to go ahead and invest in some form of online uh, video lecture website. You can either find the free ones on YouTube or you could use one of the, the paid ones. My favorite one is Osmosis Prime. I'm saying that because I use it basically all the time. Every one of my friends are using it as well. You could go ahead and find it for like $200 online when it's on sale and then you go ahead and split it with one of your friends like me and one of my other friends. You each pay a hundred bucks. The only downside is that you can't use both uh, people can't be using it at the same time, so uh, I'll go ahead and study in the morning with it if I need it, and then my friends will, will go ahead and study at night. Because there's just so much to learn here in medical school, the name of the game is all about increasing your studying efficiency. And one of my favorite ways of doing that is just by watching lectures or these videos at like two times speed, and it really helps me get more things done. Tip number three is to stay on top of your work and be consistent to avoid being overwhelmed. I think that if I could sum up the difficulty with medical school in one word, it just has to come down to consistency. Understand that if you take a little bit of time off today or a lot of time off today you're just gonna go ahead and take the things that you had to do today and move them over to tomorrow and going back to my bag analogy from before if you take books out of your bag on one day because it's feeling a little bit heavy for you you're just gonna have to put them back into your bag the next day and then you're not gonna be able to move staying consistent and getting your work done every single day is gonna be the easiest way to go ahead and be successful in medical school but the best part about all this is that unlike undergrad almost everything that you're learning in medical school is either gonna be very interesting to you or at least I hope so if you found yourself in medical school at this point, or it's going to be directly applicable to you when you're actually working as a doctor. And for that reason, the payoff of actually doing the work is just so much better and really helps to keep you going. Tip number four, and probably the biggest way that medical school has been different than undergrad, at least for me anyways, is that you actually need to remember the things that you learned at the very beginning of medical school, or at the very middle of medical school for that matter, versus back in undergrad where you could totally just forget about that one statistics class that you had to take back in your second year. As an example, I remember that cardiology was one of the very first units that we did when I first started medical school, and the things that I learned in that very first unit were just as relevant six months later when I was actually in clinic working with doctors as they were in the very beginning when I was learning about them theoretically and just being tested on them. Now my absolute favorite way to go ahead and do this is just by using the Anki flashcards that almost every single medical school student talks about. They're so effective and they're free. You go ahead and download the app on the internet and you could get all of the different decks. It's very helpful for learning everything from cardiology to respirology to anatomy and just about everything else. I will say though that even though Anki flashcards are highly effective at helping you memorize new things, it's really necessary to also go ahead and use practice banks either that are available from your school or that you seek out online because it allows you to take all the information that you've seen from lecture and also from your Anki cards and brings them together so that you could actually apply them to new questions. And finally, tip number five, and we're going to go back to my knapsack analogy one more time. Sometimes in medical school you have to go ahead and remember as hard as it is to go ahead and take that knapsack, take it right off and set it down on the ground and give yourself some time just for yourself. Is being in medical school like drinking water out of a water hose? Absolutely not, but it's also not a walk in the park guys. And I think one of my biggest factors that contributed towards me actually making it through my first year was remembering that I'm also just a person at the end of the day. And finding the time to do the things that I actually liked has been super important for me for this entire year. Going to the gym five days a week has been something that I've been doing this entire time. Finding the time to play the piano has been another thing that I really like to do. And then every single week since I started medical school, on the weekends, either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, I take one of those days completely off just to go ahead and spend some time with my friends, my family, my girlfriend, or all of them. Finding a work-life balance both in medical school and then even after medical school is something that I'm really passionate about and something that I'm going to keep trying to do for as long as I possibly can. I think it's going to provide longevity both as a student and when I'm actually a doctor and it's something that I would highly suggest to anyone else watching this video. Alright guys and that's a wrap on not only my first year but then also my five tips that I used to survive 
and make it through. My first year was absolutely awesome. I learned a lot, I saw a lot, I got to do a lot, and I can't wait to see what my second year and what my third year are gonna have in store for me. As always, I am super thankful to have all of you guys that have been here on the journey so far. There's more than 3,000 of you at this point, which absolutely blows me away every single time I see that number. So I just wanna go ahead and thank you guys so much for being with me on the journey so far. And hopefully you stick around because I have a feeling second year is gonna be even better than the first year. But other than that, hope this video was able to help you guys. Remember to keep working hard, keep studying hard. Have some fun. You guys are awesome. I'll see you later. Everyone take care.